From Dead Space to Forspoken, January was a very eventful month for video games, for better and for worse. So without further ado, let's dive into the gaming news of January 2023. After many delays, the open world fantasy RPG Forspoken finally released on PS5 and PC, and it's safe to say that critics and players were not happy with how it turned out. From what I've seen, people just don't like it very much. On Steam, I think it's got 54% positive, and the performance apparently is terrible, especially on PC. I was seeing you need 16 gigabytes of RAM to play 720p 30 FPS. I don't see how people can enjoy the game like that. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the most stable experience. And people with the required hardware are still reporting stutters and just generally bad performance. Yeah, I mean, it's not the first game recently to do it. When we played Gotham Knights, we could barely run the game and we have perfectly capable computers and it kind of seems like developers just aren't really putting enough time into the PC versions of games. Yeah, and it's a shame because PC players do buy the best hardware to run these games with the best possible frame rates and the best possible graphics, so they really should be getting the best experience. A new release that is actually good is the Dead Space Remake, which is released to a Metacritic average of 90, and it seems like it's improved on pretty much everything from the 2008 original. So we posted our review roundup earlier this week, and it does seem like critics are pretty much in love with everything from this game. And as someone who's never played Dead Space before, this remake is making me want to try it out for the first time, which is really what you want to do with a remake. Yeah, I mean, it's gone from a game that I've only really heard about before to now one that I'm actually considering playing and from what I've heard the remake hasn't just improved the graphics but also gameplay mechanics and just presentation as a whole and that kind of more refined version is like you said exactly what a remake seeks to achieve. To wrap up the releases for this month, we had a surprise shadow drop of Hi-Fi Rush. It's the latest title from Tango Gameworks that seeks to achieve the combination of action-adventure and rhythm games, and somehow it seems to have gotten it right. It's currently on about 98% on Steam, which is classed as overwhelmingly positive, and this is a score that barely any games achieve, so it's pretty insane that this completely unexpected game with no hype surrounding it whatsoever has received such such critical acclaim and support from players. Yeah, I think a big part of its success is the genres that it's mixed because you don't really see rhythm and action mixed together. I mean, I can't really think of any examples off the top of my head. And I think it's the uniqueness and creativity of the developers that's really made this game such a big success. The shadow dropping of Hi-Fi Rush was actually part of a much bigger event called the Xbox Developer Direct. This is where some massive upcoming releases were showcased, such as Minecraft Legends and one we're quite excited for, Redfall. So we did actually get release dates for both of the titles you just mentioned, Minecraft Legends on April 18th and Redfall on May 2nd. Yeah, so overall I think the show was very good, but there was one notable exception which I'm sure you know, which is Starfield. But there's no need to worry as there is a standalone Starfield showcase scheduled for some time in the near future. Future. This month, Hitman 3 became Hitman World of Assassination, a definitive version of the trilogy which now includes the newly introduced Hitman Freelancer. So this mode essentially turns Hitman into a roguelike. It doesn't introduce much new content outside of this admittedly really cool looking safe house, but it does repackage the existing maps into something that feels more coherent and infinitely replayable. This mode has introduced so many new mechanics into the game, there's even a currency. This is probably the most transformative update to Hitman since its revival in 2016. And if the future of the franchise is anything like this, then I am very excited. A recent release that I'm absolutely obsessed with is The Last of Us Show. Although only two episodes have come out so far, I think Pedro Pascal was a perfect choice for Joel, and I think Bella Ramsey, despite the controversy that came with her being chosen because she doesn't really look like Ellie, I think her acting massively makes up for it. It's just so faithful. For example, the car scene, if you haven't seen it, I recommend you watch it and compare it to the game itself because it is almost shot by shot the exact same as the game from the angle of the camera, the road signs, and that is massively important to me but also I think every fan of The Last of Us because 
it's already arguably a perfect game so to change that too much would take away from it and i think it definitely has potential to become one of the best video game adaptations of all time so even though the series is still ongoing still releasing episodes by the week the director and creator of the last of us neil Druckmann, has confirmed that there will be a second season and this second season will follow the events of the second game in the series and if it's anything like the first season i think we're in for a very enjoyable experience